Because it would be here in Maine with a, what is it, just a quarter mile past the border? Hmm. About that. But, so, but the furthest I've been in Maine ever. Hmm. <laughs> First time ever in Maine, so I would be here. And really it's May, what is it? Uh, it's the day of the Feast of St. Roman, Ra 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 Raymond Donatus. And the, uh, we'll go ahead and read the Epistle and Gospel for the Mass today. So the Epistle, the saying of that of Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus chapter 31. Testament. <clears throat> Blessed is a man that is found without blemish, and has not gone after gold nor put his trust. Put his trust in money, <clears throat> nor in treasures. Who is he will praise him, for he hath done wonderful things in his life. So the, the, the epistle, let me see here because it's got the page. So the same from First Corinthians chapter four. At that time, brethren, we are made a spectacle to the world, and to the angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we without honor. Even unto this hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted, and have no fixed abode, and we labor, working with our hands. We are reviled, and we bless. We are persecuted, and we suffer it. We are blasphemed, and we entreat. We are made as the refuse of this world, the offscouring, offscouring of all even until now. I write not these things to confound you, but I admonish you as my dearest children in Christ Jesus our Lord. Then the Gospel, take the paper. Taking that according to St. Luke chapter 12. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Fear not, little flock, for it hath pleased, pleased your Father to give you a kingdom. Sell what you possess, and give alms. Make to yourselves bags which grow not old, a treasure in heaven which faileth not, where no thief approacheth, approacheth nor a moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. For the day of your considerations, St. Raymond Nonatus, which means St. Raymond not born, because St. Raymond was one of those, this has the rare cases, it does happen many times in history, that St. Raymond's mother died before he was born. Died at his birth, and after she was dead, they pulled out his body, pulled him out from, from her, and he was still alive. And so therefore, he was not born in the normal way. He was cut out from the mom, his mother that died. And as a little child, he knew that his mother died even before he was born. And he felt that he was without a mother. And therefore, he used to visit in Spain, his little church of St. Nicholas, and visit there the statue of Our Lady, the Mother of God, and he would ask her, he said, Mother, Mary, my mother, can you be my mother? Please be my mother, and always be my mother. And that was his request, that she be her mother, he is his mother, and that, that you be the one to guide me and set me on the path, because I don't know where I'm supposed to go. 
Can you set me on the path that you want me to go and teach me the science of the saints? There is a science to be the saint. There's a knowledge of what it means to be the sign of the saints. Can you please teach me? And the Holy, from the very earliest childhood, it was noted to many that this man, this boy, whose mother died before he was born, and he was taken from his mother's mother's uh, womb after she was dead, that this child has a mother, and this child is always with his mother, and he is guided by his mother, and he was driven by her to give his life completely to God. And he joined a new order founded by the Virgin Mary herself to the great saints called the Order of Our Lady of Ransom. And it was a custom for them to go out and to try to free the slaves. There are many, many Catholic slaves who were enslaved by the Muslims, and they were brought into slavery, and they were, they were, they were then uh, uh, very much lived a life of, of, of wicked, of torture, and then they would be sold and ransomed. And so there was an order established in the church in order to fight specifically against slavery and the slavery of the Muslims who were capturing Catholics and putting them in prison and, and, and torturing them. And he devoted his life completely to giving to, to re freeing them. It was like Raymond Onatus, he went a Cree one, he was sent to Africa after he became a priest. And he was sent over and there he freed many slaves. And that, and that when he was unable to, to get the donations to buy the saves back, he put himself into slavery with them. And when he was put into slavery, in order to save the other slaves, took himself as ransom, as, they, as they're supposed to do in their order. And their free, free, uh, slaves were freed. And he was so supernatural and so holy and so filled with the love of God that he would preach to the Muslims, preach to the Mohammedans, and they converted to the faith. And the, the head of the, the sultan of the Mohammedans realized how powerful was the preaching of St. Raymond that they took bolts and they, they cut two holes in his, in his lips and they bolted his lips together. And so that he was not able to preach and he was bolted, his lips bolted together for a long time and, and, till, and that there he was, it was tortured in that manner for a very long time and then eventually the, finally released and there was a miraculous healing of his face afterwards. And they ended up dying in Spain, going back to Spain. And then one of the challenges of our time is that we are in an age in which people don't have great hearts anymore. What well, was in the heart of Raymond? Raymond wanted to give his life completely for Christ, to give his life to, the, to, 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 to help his neighbor, to give his life to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He had a desire to learn the science of the saints, and he was driven by a fire. And that is why it says that, that our Lord Jesus Christ says in the gospel, he says to all of us words that we don't listen to anymore. And he's speaking to, especially to his disciples. And our Lord Jesus Christ says, Fear not, little flock. It hath pleased your Father to give you a kingdom. We are to be reminded that we, human beings, God made us for happiness. And one thing you'll see about today, we're in a world in which people don't believe in God anymore. And even those that say they believe in God don't think about Him and have nothing to do with Him. And those that have the true faith don't believe in the words of Jesus Christ, don't believe the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, His Holy Mother of the Catholic Church, enter into their hearts. And so what's the natural result? Misery, depression, suicide. And that we're in a world of misery and depression. In fact, all around you is very noticeable today. People are just downright unhappy. And it's very simple. Without God equals unhappy. What is the place without God where God is not except in his wrath and justice? And that place is called hell. It is the place of unhappiness. And why is it the place of unhappiness? For one simple reason. It's the furthest place from God. And so God, the closer we are to God, the more we are to happiness. The further we are from God, the more we are to misery and, and, and eternal uh, depression and despair. And so that in our world today, there is depression everywhere. There is emptiness everywhere. There are people always taking psychotropic medications. They're trying to take, they're trying to take slipping pills. They're taking all kinds of pills in order to try to cover their depression. What about Raymond? Raymond was born, and what did he learn as a little child? Where's mama? Well, your mama died. Not only did she die, she died before you were even born. We had to pull your body out of her dead body. She was dead, and we pulled you out. 
We didn't think you would be able to live, but now you live, but your mother is dead. You have no memory of your mother, and you were going to just simply be raised alone. Get used to it, child. What did he do? He chose a greater mother. And he went and he went to the to the church of St. Nicholas, and he actually would die near that statue. He went all over the world, and especially over Africa, bringing the freedom to the to the to the Catholic slaves being being uh, uh, being captured and tortured and killed by the Muslims. But then he came back to Spain, and there he died near the statue of his holy mother. And that he was in and what was in his life? He did not. He was not motherless. There are so many families today that are all broken, so many children that don't have a mother and a father, so many children abandoned, but these that Raymond did not was not motherless. Raymond was not without a family. Saint Raymond had his mother. And what happened with his mother? He was driven with a fire, driven with a desire. And what does he want? Happiness and a kingdom. The Lord Jesus Christ, remember when he's speaking these words, it's just a short time before he's going to be crucified. And there he speaks of the small crowd of his little flock, my little flock, the few men around him. Do you not, my little flock, do not be afraid. Fear not, little flock. It will please your father to give you a kingdom. It must have been one of those times, perhaps after feeding the 5,000, and all the people walked away. So many times, the people were happy about Jesus Christ because he performed miracles, because he multiplied bread. But then he kept offending them. By telling them the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and that you have to leave your life of wickedness and come to, to, to follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. And then so few people were following him, and there was a little flock, and they were discouraged. They were discouraged. And what does it say to them? Fear not, little flock. Don't be afraid. For it has pleased your Father to give you a kingdom. Sell what you possess. Give alms. Make to yourselves bags which grow not old. A treasure in heaven which faileth not, where the, no thief approacheth, nor no moth corrupteth, where the thief cannot steal, and the, and the moth cannot consume. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so that our treasure is to be, where our heart is where our treasure is. And that we must go after our treasure. We must go after it. One of the challenges of today is, those people that are good, all they're trying to do is stay out of mortal sin. Is that, Maddie, if you try to be healthy, and therefore you can't eat McDonald's, and you can't eat any Happy Meals, and you, you can't have any uh, uh, milk, and you can't have any vegetables, and you can't have any meat, because it's all been destroyed by Monsanto Corporation, and all of the meat has been, has been injected with hormones, and you can't eat any bad food, and so you're going to be very healthy by making sure you don't eat anything. What's going to happen? You're going to die. You are not going to make it. You cannot live in life by trying to avoid unhealthy food. You can't live in life by trying to avoid anything that's going to harm you. You know, if you go outside, you know, with the coronavirus, this really terrible virus that no one can find, if you go outside and you go look out, they say that, you know, the sun is supposed to kill the virus. But now they say, no, you got to be, you got to keep the sun off your face. You can run around naked, but you have to make sure your face is covered. And so you're going to cover your face. Absolute ignorance, absolute foolishness. In order to try to be sure, you don't want to breathe in bad air. So you're going to cover your face. You don't breathe any air in. If you keep your mask on every day, you're going to build up hydrogen. You're going to, the oxygen level is going to go low in your body. It's going to become acidic. You're not going to be, you're breathing in your own carbon dioxide. You're just supposed to be going out. It's going to be coming back in, breathing in your own poisons. You're taking in poisons from the outside world in order to try to be safe. And you will die. Already now, there have been deaths from people fainting, driving in their cars because of uh, because of their masks. Already there's sickness because of these stupid masks. And, and that why? Because people are trying to stay away from being unhealthy. And if you try to stay away from being unhealthy, besides the fact you don't look very pretty with your mask not on, all the girls look better with their masks off, that, that if you're gonna, you don't look very good with your mask on, that you've been not only that, but you are killing yourself. What is the point of killing yourself? If this is a world in which we're trying to stay away from being unhealthy, a world is trying to stay away from sin. Catholic people are trying to stay away from sin, and they're miserable. Non-Catholic people are trying to stay away from being unhealthy. Like driving over here today, I saw a lady who was about 175 years old, somewhere around that, and she was jogging, and her skin is flopping all over the place because she's trying to keep from dying. Guess what? 
she's dying. And she's not going to make it much longer. Why is she trying to keep him dying? What's she afraid of? Raymond Nonatus, Raymond not born, he was on a journey. He was on a journey to his treasure, and every day he was closer to it. And every day he was closer to the place where he wanted to be. He was closer to the kingdom. And it's called the kingdom of heaven. And it's a real kingdom. And in that kingdom he's going to have happiness and peace. He is going to be filled with great joy. And he's running to the kingdom. And on the way to the kingdom, our Lord says, Fear not, little flock. Don't hold on to the paper money that gets wet and destroyed. Don't hold on to your computer money that will stop working when they freeze up your credit card and when your computer stops working. Don't hold on to computer money. Don't hold on to paper money. Don't hold on to your house. These things are going to be destroyed. The thief can steal it and the moth can consume it. Don't hold on to those things. Let go of those things and run. Run to things that matter. Sell those things. Give them to the poor. Give to the church. Give to the poor. Give to the others. And run to God. We're in a terrible day today because people don't really want treasures. They don't really want happiness. They don't really want a kingdom. The problem today is people just want to stay alive. I just want to survive. Guess what? You're going to die. One day you're going to stop surviving. You don't want to just survive. You don't want to just not be dead. You don't want to just stay away from cancer. The healthiest place to be is in solitary confinement in prison being watched by guards. That's a very healthy and safe place. No one can murder you there. It's wonderful. So you should all want to be like Charles Manson. You should all want to be like good serial killers who go out and murder people. Then they get put in prison and they get fed every day. They have doctors taking care of them. They get to live in a nice, safe environment. No one can hurt them. It's just wonderful. But that is, that is evil gets them there, and they are miserable when they are there. We are not meant to just stay away from unhealthy things. We're not meant to just stay away from mortal sin. We're not meant to just try to get by. We're meant to seek a treasure. We're meant to seek a kingdom. And therefore, Lord Jesus Christ said to his little flock, Fear not, little flock, because I have got for you a kingdom. Don't hold on to those worthless pieces of paper. I have gold. I have treasures that can never be taken away. And you give your, you build up the love of God in your hearts to, to give away that which is to, to, you have to the poor and to those in need. And I will provide for you for the birds of the air, neither sow nor reap or gather into barns. The lilies of the field don't sow nor reap or gather into barns. But the Heavenly Father takes care of each one of them. And the Heavenly Father will take care of us. We have to go towards our treasure. What is needed right now? Souls that love God. Souls that love his kingdom. Souls that are ready to fight in order that the kingdom of God spread throughout the entire earth. And that's the Holy Roman Catholic Church. And that's the love of God that must be inside of every soul. We have to have a great desire to spread that holy kingdom. And St. Raymond Onatus performed many miracles and then died in the greatest of happiness and the greatest of peace. And he had a mother all his life. And when he died... He met his mother, and he's with her now for all eternity. He is never motherless, and none of us will ever be motherless if we have the same mother that she had. And that she, and he asked him, what did we ask her? What did he ask her? Mother, teach me the science of the saints. Show me the path that I must go. He said, I want you to go and sell your life, and sell your health, and sell your freedom in order to save the poor slaves in Africa, the Catholics that are being put to death and are being tortured by the Mohammedans, by the Muslims, back when Muslims didn't used to be nice, and they're going to go after them, and you're going to save them, and you will, while you're in this prison, what are you going to do? You're going to convert the guards. That's what St. Peter did. That's what St. Paul did. And you're going to spread the kingdom of the divine truth and the divine love everywhere you go, and every time you spread good, there's going to be a treasure a paycheck stored in heaven that can never be taken away. We have to have great desires. Our problem is we don't desire happiness. We don't desire a kingdom. We don't desire the absolute victory of Christ in our own hearts and in the hearts of all others. We need to have this kind of desire inside of us. And then when the Holy Mother says, all right, go over here. All right, go over there. We'll be able to go and God will bless us and strengthen us. And let's not be trapped by the foolish deceits of our modern world. The world of today is dying. The world of today is finished. 
We don't want to be in the world that's dying and finished. We want to be in the world that can never be closed and can never be finished and will always be glorious. And that is the world of our Holy Roman Catholic faith. It is the world of heaven. It is the world of our Lord Jesus Christ. The world of virtue. This virtue is called strength, power. The word virtue means strength. The word virtue means power. And those who don't have virtue have no strength and have no power. We must have asked of our Blessed Virgin to teach us the ways of virtue and power. And so that we'll be driven to go to places where, where we, 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 we will find great happiness. If only we follow the inspirations of heaven and strive for a kingdom and keep the Blessed Virgin as our mother. Cousin, I love you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.